A brush is really just an embellishment to a line. So when you draw a line using the freehand and brush tool, it's a simple matter to convert the line to a brush. You can use one of the many brush styles from the line gallery. Here's the freehand and brush tool. Now move over to the line gallery, choose a brush, and then click Apply to use the brush. You can also use the info bar up here to choose a brush as well as a stroke shape. It's still a line, so you can change the width up here, as well as any of the colour options down here on the colour line. To change brushes, just click away from the line to deselect it, or press the escape key on your keyboard, and then select your new brush. Change the style of an existing brush by selecting it, and then choosing a new style. That's the basics out of the way. Now there are two types of brushes, art brushes and scatter brushes. They're organised into folders in the line gallery, and up here on the info bar, the art brushes have an A next to the brush name. An art brush creates a more or less conventional brush shape, which stretches or repeats along the path of the line, whereas a scatter brush will stamp or scatter your brush at intervals along the line. You can also create your own brushes. Firstly, create your brush shape. It can be a vector or a bitmap. Then selecting the shape, go into the freehand and brush tool and click on Create Brush. Give the brush a name if you want to. Decide whether you want the brush to be a scatter or art brush and then click on Create. Now you can draw with your brush straight away and the brush appears in the drop down menu on the brush tool info bar. It also appears in a folder over in the line gallery as well. If you want to edit your brush then make sure it's active and then click on the edit brush button up here on the info bar. If it's an art brush there are three scaling options and three line colour options. Starting with the scaling options you can have the brush scale to fit the stroke length as in a long continuous paintbrush style of brush. You can have the stroke scale proportionately to the size of the stroke like these stars the longer the bigger, or you can have them repeat along the length of the stroke like this. With the line colour options you can stick with the default option, the ignore option, which is to keep the original colours of the brush, the definition colours. You can change the colour by clicking on a replacement from the colour line in the usual way if you like of course. The mix line colour with definition colours option is intended for brushes that have a strong hue, as in some of the default brushes provided. The strong hues in those brushes will be replaced with your chosen colour, but grayscale tones such as blacks, whites and greys remain unchanged. The last option, Mix Line Colour with Definition Greys, is intended for grayscale brushes. Shades of grey and shades of other colours in the brush will be replaced by corresponding shades of your chosen line colour. When you create a new grey brush, this colouring option is selected for you by default. If you are editing a scatter brush, you get another set of options. So moving through the tabs here, we've got spacing, which controls the gap between the objects in the brush. Next we've got offset, which controls the distance between the original line and the objects in the brush. Then we have scaling, which controls the size of the objects in the brush. On the next row we have Rotation, where we can control the rotation of the objects in the brush as they follow the line. Transparency, which of course controls the transparency. And finally the Fill Properties tab, which lets you alter the range of colour properties when you randomise the fill colours. A couple of extra things to look out for. Your art brushes will look better if they are more or less horizontal. Otherwise the brush objects will tend to deviate from the line you draw. Also, when you create a brush from a bitmap, make sure that you get rid of as much empty space as possible around the object. If there is invisible space at the ends of the brush, then your lines won't start and end correctly. And if there is empty space along the top and bottom edges, then the line will appear narrower than its correct width.